After the right. after the planes hit there there you know down on the wreckage there was two pieces of metal that made a cross and mm -hmm. somebody got all excited about that it's like oh Jesus was there <laughs> it's just just defies defies my imagination yeah, like thousands of people died but at least this m these metal bars <laughs> lined up across one it's another it's a miracle <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> okay let's talk about the systematic failure of prayer. This is another thing. Well, if, you, if there's a God sitting around, maybe he just needs, you know, maybe he's a little lazy. Maybe he needs a reminder that, mm -hmm. that, that these things over here need fixing. They're not quite, they're not quite working very well. Um, and people supposedly can pray to God and, and, uh, and tell him about his neglected duties. <coughs> and in fact, the Bible even confirms that. Uh, Matthew 17, 20, Jesus says, For truly I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, a little bit of faith, you will, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and I will move, and nothing will be impossible for you, nothing. Hmm. Isn't, that, isn't that powerful? Boy, just, just a little bit of faith, a little bit of prayer, and, and anything you want to happen. I haven't heard of any mountains moving. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I guess the conclusion is that either there is no one in the world who uh, had faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed. <laughs> It's the smallest seed, according to Jesus. Or they just didn't see any mountains that needed moving. <laughs> right. Well, surely, you know, the settlers of the West would have liked to have, you know, had, it, had the mountains part so yeah, they could go, go been explore the West Coast. But, you know, they were all atheists. No wonder Christians <laughs> feel so persecuted. Or Mormons, or some, Mormons never made it over the mountains, did they? <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess they did. Yeah, Utah's on the other side. Anyway, somehow they found a way. Eventually. Uh, there's another one, uh, Matthew 18, 19. Jesus says, Again I say unto you, if, t if two of you agree on the earth about anything they ask, anything they ask, I will, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For when there are two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. So uh, I got so, a problem with that. Uh, me too. Football What's your problem? Games, anyone? Football games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you have people on both sides praying yeah, for opposite I mean, things. Yeah, I mean, can so God do, they, do, they do cancel contradictory them things? Because presumably that both sides are praying. Or actually, people always bring Maybe up God's football games. Maybe God's creating alternate realities I, I where have both a teams better, win. Yeah. <laughs> I have a better example that even more is an issue of scale. The stock market. <laughs> Oh, yeah? There are millions of transactions happening all the time every day. And one, one person making money depends on another person losing money. That must be a logistical nightmare for God if people are praying over the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do you keep everybody at zero sum and all that? Right. Mm. <laughs> so from that last quote, quote where we have, you know, if, if two or three of you come together and pray in my name, it'll come true. You know, the only thing I can think of about that is, boy, Christians surely must be very selfish, right? Because we have all this evil in the world, all this, you know, famine and disease and persecution and such. And, and if only two of them would get together and, and solve, you know, they could solve the problem. Or, or you know, it, why do we need a national defense system? Why not just have two or three Christians, you know, pray and say, hey, you know, we're going to put a protective shield around the United States. Yeah, and plus, be how, a lot many, cheaper. how many people have told us that they would pray for us to change our minds? That's right. That That's right. We get that all the time. We'll pray for you. It hasn't worked so far. It's not working too well. So um, what about uh, Christians who, who pray for their own, you know, if who are, you know, starving to death, you know, groups of Christians who are want to, you know, want, want not to be victims. What about those folks? Well, the, the spin in this case is that these people don't believe enough, that they need more Christianity. Mm. And, and this is sort of a blame the victim sort of thing, right? If, if you're a Christian and you don't get what you want, it's because you're, 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 not, you're not good enough for, for in God's word. And, and this, is, this is the basis of the prosperity gospel, mm -hmm. right? Where, where, you know, God blesses the rich. <laughs> And if you're poor, you don't believe it's good enough. And, and this is the basis of our faith-based initiatives, by the way, this same idea that, that if people are in trouble or if they're in jail or if they need help, they need more. It's because they, they, have, they don't have enough religion in their lives. So right. does Andrea Yates, who, who drowned her five kids in Houston, does she need more religion, you think? Uh, you, do you think that would help the situation? I, I don't know. She, <laughs> I, mean, I guess she was an atheist. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, no, neither was uh, Susan Smith, who also did the same thing. In, in fact, it's gotten to the point where any time I see a headline that says somebody killed their kids, I'm, all, I'm like, how far will we go before we get to the Christian angle? And I'm never disappointed. In yeah, that. yeah, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. There always seems to be a religious motivation. So getting back to prayer, um, you know, in reality, nothing fails like prayer. I mean, we have a little little phrase like, nothing fails like prayer. When mm -hmm. there's been controlled studies, in fact, there's been one pretty recently, uh, about two years ago, from the uh, Templeton Foundation that did, was a study of intercessory prayer uh, where, where people were praying for the benefit of some people in the hospital. And the study found that, you know, and this was funded by a kind of religious, religious friendly mm -hmm. organization. The study found that there wasn't any, any positive benefit to this. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, the only time that there has been positive benefit shown for the person being prayed about is when the study has been found to be fraudulent. So, so that tells you a lot that, that people want there to be the studies like this and they're willing to make them fraudulent. There is a benefit, it turns out, to the prayer. But it's the same benefit you'd get from meditation or just talking, just slowing down and, and thinking about, you know, the big picture for a minute right. or two. There's I'm not sure that you can categorically say that all studies about prayer have failed. Because if you look at it in a meta sense, uh, the, the test group that they're going to look at, some of them will be slightly above average, some of them will slightly be That's right. There's below some statistical average. Games and you can so do. if you take like hundreds of studies, then you will wind up finding a few one. studies right. where it looked like more people got better than you would expect from random chance. I mean, you know, that's just the way right. the nature is. And it's, it's, it's analogous to if you throw darts randomly, right. at some point you're going to hit something. Mm -hmm. And so it's called the sharpshooter's fallacy, where you, if you're allowed to circle yes, after the fact right. where, where you meant the, the dart to go, then it looks like you're a pretty good shot. It's, it's sort, of, sort of like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so nothing fails like prayer. You know, you, nobody seems to be able to talk to God, and and so there, uh, and and in fact, believers themselves don't really believe that they can talk to God. I mean, if if if, uh, when do you find true believers in in hospitals, right? If they, if they were true believers, they'd go to their their minister, they'd go pray, and and they'd have their disease cured. Christian but scientists. Christian scientists. They don't a, believe in uh, yeah. in medicine. And and I'm willing to bet that their their longevity is quite a bit lo lower than. <laughs> uh, so I, you should know, do a just, study on that. This is this is kind of a you know a kind of a, almost a mean thing to say, but I had an aunt who was a Christian scientist until she got really sick, and then she she <laughs> threw that kick back to the curb because mm -hmm. <laughs> she did she wanted to live, and 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 clearly that wasn't going to do it. Um, and I mentioned the national defense thing. If we really believed that prayer was going to work, we would we would use it for our national defense instead of you know a, a way to a way to uh, you know didn't uh, send, send money. Jerry Falwell or Pat Robertson or both used to talk about how 9/11 happened because God oh, yeah. took His shield of protection away from the United States yeah, because He yeah. was so ticked and off. Send them more money <laughs> to help help re restore that shield. Right. <laughs> so I mean, you know. It would certainly be a lot cheaper <laughs> if we eliminated our Department of Defense. It would probably deal with all our budget problems. Yeah, and, it, would, uh, it would save us know, a lot of could, money. We could rely on God's magical shield of protection. Oh, right. I forgot. It's our fault. <laughs> right. That doesn't work anymore. Right. It's those atheists that <clears throat> are causing all sorts of problems. Yeah. Only I thought that people just had the, the to have the faith of a mustard seed. I mean... How weak is God if a minority like us, you know, it's 15% if it's non-believers, but it's like 5% if you're talking about the serious atheists, who I assume are the ones that are causing the problem. How weak is God if he needs unanimity to maintain his shield? I mean, you, you would think that the power of the prayers could, like, divert the engines <laughs> or something right. to, you, you know... All, all divert all power to the to the forward shields or something. Right. <laughs> God just you know, atheists I, I guess were like kryptonite to God. Right, right. Well, we've teased in the past about how how gays must have some sort of protective shield. Because, yes, uh, right. You because know when the, when the yeah when the when the hurricane hit New Orleans, you know uh, the, the the really 
awful part, the, the, uh, the uh, French Quarter ended up surviving pretty well, <laughs> mostly because it was on high ground. But, but uh, science. But, but yeah, the people are happy to spin that as, you know, God's wrath against the, the, those evil homosexuals. <laughs> anyway, pretty silly.